have you ever tried to look up your name in Google and seen what comes up? It's, it's kind of fun. I haven't done it for a little while. Uh, Matt T. Hapoya. Um, no comment. One of the things that people don't really think about enough is how much of a difference it makes what lens you're choosing to film with. But when you're using a gimbal or a steady cam or some sort of stabilizer and you're having movement in the shots, it matters even more which lens you use. You can get a completely different look from using something like this, the 24 mil, versus using something like this, which is an 85 mil. The look is completely different. Now typically when you're starting out using gimbals or steady cams, I do recommend using a wider lens for a few different reasons. First off, it's way easier to frame up your shot when you're using a wide angle on a gimbal versus something like a zoom lens, like an 85 mil. Two, it's a little bit more versatile to use something like a 24 mil or a 35 mil because you can still get those wide shots and you can get the close up shots. And then three is that it exaggerates the movements a lot of times. So you don't have to go as crazy with your movements, but you're still getting that action, that movement, even by walking just a little bit. But using a lens that's a little bit more zoomed in, like an 85 mil, can make for some really, really cool results. So why don't we compare the two? Let's look at what kind of results do you get out of the 24 mil and then the 85 mil and how different they are on a gimbal that is. All right, so first off we have the classic dolly forward and here we're just moving closer to our subject. So we're starting out farther, we're starting kind of on a wide shot and then we're gonna walk forwards until we're on kind of like a close up or medium shot. And it's crazy how different the look is even though the settings are completely the same, we're at f2.8 here, white balance, all of that stuff is exactly the same. The look is completely different. Right away we see that the movement with the 24 mil is a lot more exaggerated and that's because we don't have to walk as far of a distance to complete this move from a wide shot to a close up. When I was using the 85 mil I had to go like way far out there and walk really far to get up to that zoomed in close up. To get it to look like I'm moving kind of at the same speed I would have had to walk way faster or run even with the zoomed in lens and, and even with that the movement would still look completely different which we'll get to in a little bit. Next we can notice that with the 85 mil you're getting way more shallow depth of field even though we're at the same aperture and that's just the nature of things with a 24 mil versus an 85 mil but the whole image just looks a little bit softer and nicer almost less contrasty which is really interesting. And then of course we get to the background which looks completely different with the 24 mil we're seeing a lot more of the background and then with the 85 mil we're only seeing like a tiny portion of it and so of course with the movement then with the 24 mil you're gonna see a lot more movement in the background versus the 85 mil it kind of looks like the background stays fairly static like there's not that much movement going on with the 85 it almost looks more like a, a zoom in than a dolly forward unless you're just really focusing in on the subject then you can kind of see a little bit of a difference when you're dollying forward with the 85 mil then let's take a look at the orbit so we're just circling around the subject and I did a wide and then a little bit more of a close-up and again the movement here takes way longer with the 85 mil because the orbit is way bigger where I'm going having to go farther away from the subject and do this really wide arc as opposed to the 24 mil I can be pretty close so I don't have to move as far of a distance so the movement takes a longer amount of time but here it's really interesting the background almost looks like it's moving faster with the 85 mil it kind of looks like it's whizzing around Matt as I'm orbiting around him and this is where we get that Michael Bay effect it kind of makes this crazy action chaotic look and he did this a lot using zoom lenses and then just orbiting around him his, his characters or his actors. It really helps to add a little bit of action with that faster whizzing around. It kind of looks like the world is spinning around the character. Versus with the 24 mil, it's very apparent that we are spinning around the subject. With the 85 mil, it kind of looks like the world is spinning around the subject. And then we have the classic leading or follow shot. So here we're just either moving 
backwards in front of the subject or we're following the subject. And with the 24 mil, you see a lot more movement. It looks like the character is walking and moving forwards. Whereas with the 85 mil, it, it almost looks like Matt's kind of just like walking in the same place because the background doesn't change as much. It kind of looks static. Just kind of looks like he's just walking there and he's just kind of faking it. But it is a really nice look also, especially this follow shot. I don't know, there's just something really, really nice about it. It really isolates the subject and I just love the movement and it, it, there's kind of like an ominous feel to it. So really here with lenses, like always, there's no right or wrong. You should always be using this or you should always be using that. They're just very, very different. Not only in the typical differences between a more zoomed in lens or a wider lens, but also with the movement. It makes a massive difference if you're using a wider lens, a 24 or 35 mil, or a more zoomed in lens, like a 50 or an 85 or a 135. You'd get that crazy whizzing around the world effect. But in general, like I said, I would recommend if you're starting out to use a more wide lens, something like a 24 or a 16 mil or a 35 mil at the very least, just because it's a lot more forgiving. It's easier to frame your angle. Um, if there's a little bit of shake while, while you're filming with an 85 mil, you're gonna notice that shake a lot. Even just a tiny movement, uh, you're just like, whoa, whoa. Uh, the orbiting shot is much harder on the 85 mil, I'd say, but the look is really cool also. So when you're starting out, I would definitely recommend trying out a wide lens first, and then once you get a little bit better with a gimbal or steady cam, then move into the more zoomed in lenses like an 85 mil. And I'd say gimbals really opened up using lenses like an 85 mil with movement. Before it was really hard to use uh, something like an 85 mil when you're trying to do a moving shot just because you have to be so careful with the movement and gimbals allow you that kind of precision or that extra stable movement that you need for a more zoomed in lens when you're running around with it. All right, so there we go. I hope that helps you kind of make your choice on which lens to use when you're trying to do some moving shots with a gimbal or steady cam. Um, for me even, this was really eye-opening doing this comparison. I haven't really ever compared them like this. Um, so yeah, I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot too. Okay, uh, I really need to do something about that that uh, Google search, so I'm gonna try to make myself a Wikipedia page or something. I, I don't know. I, I've already buried a lot of the other uh, Hapoya, Mati Hapoya, Mati Hapoya search results, but this is just weird now. I I, I don't I don't know what to think about this. <laughs> All right, wish me luck.